My name is Sechel, I'm the author of Hellcat. I have not prepared a lot of for this um, talk. Um, the only um, thing I made is um, the slides, and everything I do now is um, um, to um, improve um, my talk. So um, I just start um, underneath this slide and go to the tools. So, so this is all the tools you know from um, Hellcat tool. Hashcat um, is a CPU-based cracker, also a Hashcat Plus is a um, GPU cracker, it's something like Hashcat CPU, but it works on GPU. Also a Hashcat Lite is um, a GPU cracker, but it's not made for real password cracking, it's made for, um, for competition. So uh, one of the things of uh, Hashcat is um, I'm not just trying to to um, code a program that is made for password pressing, it's also made for um, competition. So um, since I'm a coder and not a hacker, um, for me it's important um, to have a tool to compete with other coders. And also the hashcat line is a competition cracker because um, also the hashcat line is um, only focused on performance. Um, hashcat utils is a set of um, utils um, that you can use um, when you are using um, um, when you are doing a lot of um, password tracking, you have the problem that you have to um, modify your word list sometimes, um, or that you have very special situations, and um, you have to deal with them. You solve um, patterns and the cracked passwords that come out, and um, the cracked utils you can modify um, your your data you are using for um, the inputs that you use for the script. Um, mass processor and fast processor are all above standalone programs. And that is the point. Okay. Um, I will start with masks. Um, masks are one of the, the basic things on that all hashcat uh, hash programs use. Um, Instead of um, using a um, um, simple thing like an um, okay, instead of using an um, piece base um, that you think of like a set set set, um, which is very intuitive that you want to brute force. Um, you, you have to think um, if you if you are if you are trying to make a to tell a program what key space to generate, then um, you have many problems. The first thing is um, you have to tell a pro program which key space the how, how big is the key space, um, how great is um, how big is the whole list of password, etc. In this case, it's um, three a a to set set set. It's three. It's a fixed length, and this is simple. So if you want to tell if you want to tell a program to generate exactly this key space, um, it's simple. You have two parameters. But um, if you know something about that password, for some reason like um, you know something, like show us something and so um, something about that password in that case, for example you know the one ninety eight one um, eighty four, um, is that um, how, how would you tell a program um, to add to this thing? And um, so you would need another um, option, and um, in that case, the option to add a sort to the password. And um, so you have at, at this at this point in time, you have three parameters. You need you need the um, the transfer, you need the length, and you have the sort. So um, this is still intuitional, but um, you have already three parameters. For example, if you have even more information about the password line, you know the password is um, always an upper case. Um, you need another parameter, like a fourth parameter. Um, and all the things go on and on. So um, instead of um, having it, even more uh, parameters to tell the program with the key space to be generated, there are masks. And with masks, you do not need all these parameters. You just need to 
um, know how to how to um, how to write masks. So um, why do these really rely expressions? Well, they are too slow. If you think about how the hash can run it, in MD5, for example, it uh, generates on a 7970 8 billion candidates per second. You cannot do it with regular expressions. So um, if you have two or three or four GPUs, it gets even better, um, faster, faster, faster. So um, you need um, a syntax that, that is easy to, to write for the user, and you need um, a syntax that is easy to understand for a program to generate. So a um, mask is, is, is uh, something in the middle. The mask processor is a standalone pro program like Crunch. Um, but it uses masks as a syntax. And yeah, it just needs one, at least one parameter of the mask. There are a lot of parameters you can use, like a starting point, ending point, if you want to distribute it, um, your key space. And you can use the mask processor, for example, if you want to feed all the pressures. Right. In that case, um, the MP64 is the mask processor, and the first parameter is one of the masks. In that case, uh, it's a lower, 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 lower digit, 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 digit. That's what you pipe it to AirTrack, and that way you are able to crack like WPA passwords with a mask, because by default you cannot crack with AirTrack um, WPAs um, with a um, and this works with Windows Group. Okay, um, you can also use the mask processor to generate rules. For example, um, if you want to um, generate a rules that um, appends something or group um, something, um, you need um, a lot of lines per rule. Um, so instead of writing them, you, uh, you can let the mask processor generate them for you. Prepend all letters and I want to append all digits. That makes a total combination of 260 rules. And um, if I want to write that, I have to open the text editor and write 260 lines. Much, much work and um, also very, um, the, the, the possibilities to do something wrong is also very high. So let mask processor do it. It's very simple. You um, use the prepend charm and you say, um, Touch mark L, it will generate all A to Z variants, and you so, uh, say also um, question mark E, and in combination to that 26 uh, variants from uh, question mark L, it will generate 260 um, values um, rules. Okay, um, yeah, it's 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 it. It's very often the case that um, when you crack a, um, some, some hash list, um, then you see some pattern uh, in that hash list. And um, then you have to prep the problem, how can I tell the password cracking tool to make use of the patterns I have identified? And um, that means very often that you have to write rules. Instead of writing rules, you can use mask processor to generate the rules. The mask processor is very fast, so um, that's one of the, the best parts of it. It's so fast that you can feed nearly every CPU-based cracker with it, because there are no CPU crackers that can um, do around 50 million hashes per password. Mm. There are some, but the most cannot. And or if you are writing a password cracker, you can um, you can use a um, mask processor to do the password generation part of it. You can concentrate. On the password hashing in the The stealth processor is something like the mask processor, um, but there's only there's one difference. It uses Markov chains um, to improve the order of the generate of the um, um, candidates to generate. And yeah, it's 
um, the number of um, total output candidates is exactly the same as the smart processor, um, unless you um, change the threshold. Okay, um, let's come to the um, attack mode from Hefka. Um, I will not um, explain the general and brute force your model, and um, I will only talk about the uh, advanced attack mode. The combinator attack, for example, one of my favorites, um, is very simple. You have not one dictionary, you have two dictionaries. You have the first dictionary, that's called the left dictionary, and the second, that's called the right dictionary. And every word from the right, right dictionary is appended to every word from the left dictionary. So the total numbers is just a multiple. So here's an example of that. You have a dictionary um, which contains Lucy and M, and um, run, if you run um, this dictionary on both sides of the of hashcat in the uh, combinator mode, it produces both variants. So um, you can um, improve the um, candidates um, by using rules. You can use uh, rules that are applied before the um, a combination is done. So if you say you append um, a dash to the left to every bar, then you can do the, the separator child. At that case, you can use every child. You can you can even reverse whatever you want to do with it. So um, combinator attack is very efficient against past traces. Uh, past traces are one of the things that um, yeah many praise for the perfect solution for our passwords. Um, they are good, but there is, there is a way to crack them. It's not the combinator attack. So if you have a dictionary that contains all these words, they result, at least these are real passwords um, that I cracked with from some leaked hashes. And um, they result in all the combinations at least, but also in them. So as you can say, you can see, you can um, generate um, um, passwords really easy with them. And like with all attack modes, um, they also produce results you do not expect. So a good um, attack mode, in my opinion, produces the, um, the candidates you think of, but it they also produce candidates you do not think of and crack something with it. Like when I was making this slide, um, I was cracking some hashes and I also cracked this one and I was thinking, yeah, what's going on? That's just one word. So the, the thing is that the password was had a space on the end. So it cracked it because space was part of the dictionary. So yeah, that was one of the cool things. Uh, another um, attack mode is a data attack. Um, it's a very complicated, a very, very complicated attack, and I cannot go too deep into this. There is a video, um, there are many videos about um, the data attack. Um, you can see them online, but um, the data attack is, is made very good. It's a very good thing to crack like international passwords or talk case passwords. And um, you can combine that with, with something like you can um, crack internationalized passwords plus lead speak tones. So if someone has a, like a German word and um, he lead speaks it, at the same time you can crack them. The table itself, the configuration of the table is uh, very simple. Um, you have one chart on the left side, you have n charts on the right side. And um, with, with, for every chart, you have on the left side, um, it produces the number of candidates on the right side. So as you can see here, the A is on the left side, and you say, um, make small a's to big a's, make small a to an f 
to an air or to that thing which looks like an air. So um, if your dictionary contains Anita, only the small R is used because um, if you want to iterate through that A, you need a big A at that point, a capital S A. So this A is here, this A is here, this A is here, and so on. So the topic case is one of the easiest attack modes that was in Hashcat CPU since ever. It just generates all toggle variants of a word. But later we found out that a to a simple toggle case is, is not bad, but um, there is a better way to write toggle cases. Like um, when you generate a password and you look at it at the password, um, the, the number of uppercase letters and lowercase letters is usually not is the same. Or well, at least there are less uppercase letters than lowercase letters. And um, with a standard topic case attack, you go through all variants. So um, this is not really, really mm, mm, efficient because you don't need, um, if, if you have a word with fair letters, you don't need the variant with four uppercase because it's very unlikely that um, the user chooses it. Um, you, you, you want only three, two, or one. So instead of using an attack mode, you use rules. Because with rules, you can do an uppercase um, conversion. And um, if you create a large number of, um, of rules that um, change the, um, the case in every letter, then um, you can um, generate the same result, but with less tries. And with less tries, you have um, a fast attack. Okay, um, the target case is not part of OSEL hashcat because um, <coughs> you can simply pipe the hashcat to OSEL hashcat. Very simple. Yeah. Um, another feature of um, OCL hashcat plus is that you can use stack rules. Um, in that case, I'm stacking a toggle based rule with a lead speed rule, reducing in this are real passwords. Um, in these candidates, so um, they look very complicated, but they are very simple. So this is a, a way to attack those passwords. The permutationless attack is something um, that never worked really well for me. I thought it would work very good, but it, it didn't. So I removed it from also hashcat, um, but I showed you what the idea was behind. So a simple permutation, I think this is clear. Resulted, for example, if you have this word in your dictionary, it results in all these candidates, including others. But these are passwords that could be um, um, that could be something that uh, a user has chosen. So I thought maybe this is a way to produce candidates in an easy way because um, it's always the, the problem is always the same. You have to feed the GPU with a lot of candidates, and um, so you have to produce them all the time. And you have to produce them fast, produce them fast. So I thought this was a way, but it didn't work. If you really want to use it, um, it's still in Hashcat CPU, and you can find it to also Hashcat. Fingerprint attack again is something really complicated to explain. Um, there are also videos, and then um, the fingerprint attack, the main goal of this is um, to do automated attacks. So um, you do not want to um, write rules or think about what could the user have chosen for his password? You just want to have, you have the hash list and you say hash can do something. So you can use the uh, fingerprint, fingerprint attack. Um, to do the fingerprint attack, you need the hashcat utils. And with the hashcat utils, there's a tool that is called expander. 
which is somewhat of the thing I'm going to say. This was used in 2010, and in the first Track Me If You Can contest, and it made us all, because um, with the thing of Intertech, we found new patterns, again, all the time, um, because it is, if you're in that contest, um, you, you have an idea, you have another idea, all the people, people have ideas, and after five hours, um, you have more ideas. <laughs> and um, you know, don't know what to do. So the good way is um, run, run a fingerprint attack, and it will generate something for you, and you will find new patterns that way. OK, the rule-based attacks, very simple. Um, they are very old. I think they have been introduced with crack 4.0. It's just a little programming language, and uh, you are able to um, do very targeted attacks, like um, to say at a one, at a two, or reverse the password, or whatever truncated. It's a very efficient um, thing. So if you have to attack a very slow hash, like TrueCrypt or WPA, you cannot use combinator attacks or fingerprint attacks, but you can use at least rule-based attacks. Um, functions at all that you can use for programming the, the, the engine. And yeah, they are all typically including in some examples. There are also um, examples in the rules folder and um, where there are more than examples because they are really good rules. So if you uh, want to attract, attract something, take a look at, um, at the rules folder. There are some really good rules inside there. Packet has a debugging function, so this is very unique because you can output the, the words that have been used um, that have been used for the generation of a candidate that actually cracked the password. So if you want to analyze which words have been very efficient in, in, in combination with some rules, you can use the debugging function. Um, it will write the word for n times, it cracks a password into a file. And the same is true for the rule. So if you want to find out which rule inside the rule that um, file was very efficient, you can use the debugging feature, and it will output the rule n times the number that it, it, it cracks a password. OK, again, and the second rule of also that was um, very interesting because you can um, it's not really, so you can say you have many rules um, in the command line, like a toggle or a lead speak, and it's not executed in a sequence. So it's like a combinator attack. Um, it appends every rule to every rule. And by doing this, um, you can generate attack modes yourself, because um, you can generate in an easy way um, a lot of um, candidates on the GPU side. It's not calculated on the whole side. And it makes it also very unique because also Hashcat is the only program that has a um, GPU engine uh, and root engine on the GPU. So there are some examples. Um, you can use it as a um, hybrid attack. Um, there's a hybrid folder, and in the hybrid folder there are some rules, and these rules are just appending numbers or prepending numbers, and you can say append letters, append num um, um, let more letters, and prepend numbers. So um, this is something that many people like to do with a triple combination attack, but um, it's more um, efficient to do it with rule based attack. And one of my favorites, again, is the hybrid attack, um, which is 
something that um, yeah, people do, we, we, we all know that people use birthdays, yes, and append it to their passwords. So um, if you want to crack them, you could use rules. But um, if it's a number which is not inside the rule, like if it's not a birth year or it's some very unique number that only that person knows, you will not crack the rules. But with hybrid attack, you can um, you can attack in a way that you say um, you have a dictionary on the one side and you have a mask like um, expanded form on one of the sides, on the left side or on the right side. Okay, here's one of the examples. So. People, these are again real life passwords. People made these passwords and um, to crack it, um, you have a dictionary which should contain um, Julia password one in that case and New York. And um, this mask is appended to each of the words inside the dictionary. So you have the digits, the symbol, here's the symbol, here's the digits, and you append three of them. So in that case, it wouldn't be enough because you might think that because there are 985 is only three, but if your password contains the, um, uh, your dictionary contains the password Julia one, you will crack it. And it's very likely you have it in your dictionary. Yeah. Um, and again, with the attack modes um, that crack the stuff you don't think of, um, this, the hybrid attack is another one. Um, in my dictionary, I had only the cat, and I wanted, I had to crack the cat head. So, um, with hybrid, um, it added head because head is inside the key space of LLL. So, it, it's like a combinator attack, but it wasn't supposed to work, to work like that. But that's a good thing with these attack modes. They produce stuff you do not think in the first place. Yeah, and here's another example. So I have phone in the dictionary, and you have, I have this mask, which produces Taylor. So I crept the telephone. Yeah, you should remind us, because this is super efficient. This is really one of the most efficient attacks against large unsolved attachments. So, if you want to use these candidates that a cat can produce, um, and you want it with another cracker because another cracker can crack an algorithm that a cat does not support, um, if it has an STD out parameter, and you can feed other crackers like John, for example, or if you are calling your own cracker and you do not want to um, concentrate on the password generation part, which is bigger part of the, of the password cracking, um, and you want to concentrate only on the cracking part, you can use hashcat for the password validation. Yeah, and that, um, I often face a problem that I have um, started um, an attack, and it is running, and it is running, and it is not producing anything. And I'm thinking, I'm starting to think, Hmm. Did I everything correct? Is the program correctly working? So to ensure that, you can use STDO. And um, to get a better understanding, if the, the attack is started, is really doing what you want it to do. So again, use the STDO and check the output plans um, if they are doing what you want it to do. Here's an example of that. Um, just create a rule, append a one to something, use STD out, and you see all, or you should see that all your words from your dictionary have an up and one pattern. Okay, that's